Despite what any of the haters say, Brock Purdy is officially a legitimate NFL quarterback. No, it's not his underdog story, his 11-0 record in full games. Okay, that does help a little. But it's what he puts on film that has finally turned me into a BCB believer. While there are still troubling flaws that lurk beneath the surface, popping up here and there on his film, we'll get into those a little later. Purdy has showed that he has the makeup and ability of a real NFL quarterback, and he could be the one to finally lead the 49ers to a Super Bowl win. His biggest strength is his ability to absolutely dominate the intermediate middle of the field. Last year, he completed 80.4% of his passes that traveled 10 to 19 yards, a full 12% higher than the second highest quarterback. No way he could sustain that, right? Well, this year, he is completing, no joke, 90% 19 of 21. It's not just what he does after the snap that's damn impressive, it's also what he does before it. Check him out looking at Patrick Peterson. Pat P is yelling at the new safety Keanu Neal to drop back out of his disguise into a too deep shell. Good pre-snap quarterbacks know safeties cheat back a little bit in too high when they're disguising, they have to get to their landmark. Neal's a little further back than the linebackers here, so Purdy knows the middle of the field will be cleared out for this deep basic route, and if he feels like he can beat the dropping Cole Holcomb with the throw, he'll rip it, and if not, he'll just check it down. He's ultra-aggressive in all situations, another one of his strengths we'll dive into later. Where Holcomb's hips are flipped, he's got depth. You have George Kittle underneath a dropping linebacker, that's an easy 8 yards, but Purdy is always pushing the envelope and taking calculated risks. You'd think within this offense he's just a distributor. I mean, CMC, Kittle, Ayuk, Debo. But he makes real throws with real anticipation that are really hard. On 3rd and 7, he wants to hit this dig to Ayuk, which he does, but this thing is going to be challenging. The Rams start in a 2 high safety coverage, but are going to rotate 1 down as a robber, so Purdy has to read that out. He knows against man coverage he wants the dig. It's hard to guard a sudden in-breaking route one-on-one, -on -one, and he knows the Rams know he wants to throw it, hence the robber safety, but he runs into a complication. Usually, with what's called a post safety, a one high safety guarding the post, and then this robber, cornerbacks in man coverage play outside leverage, where they're gonna try and gain an advantage by positioning themselves outside the receiver so he can't win there. If the receiver wants to go inside, sure, that's where my two high and low safeties are waiting. Purdy does a good job of identifying the dig post snap because it should have outside leverage and it'll have a little window. However, Quinton Lake messes up his assignment and stays inside leverage, so now the dig should be dead, but Purdy is cool as hell and fires the ball in to move the chains. This is even more impressive knowing Aaron Donald is flying around the edge. Look at the poise Purdy has to sit in the pocket and wait for the perfect moment when a split second later, 99 takes you to the ground. That poise is another one of his biggest strengths. Nothing faces him, no amount of pressure. The Giants thought they could get to him on a short week Thursday night game, blitzing him on 33 out of 39 snaps. That's 84%, which is a record for the next-gen stats era. Well, Purdy shredded them. Pre-snap, he's really, really good, where he sees safety Xavier McKinney and corner Deontay Banks in man coverage. He has what's basically a smash concept, but watch Kittle and Juice switch release. This is to affect the leverage of the defenders, where if you have an outbreaker versus inside leverage, you want to hit that, and an inbreaker versus outside leverage, you'd want to hit that too. Both defenders should be inside leverage because they don't have help in the middle, the Giants are blitzing, so the coverage defenders want to force the ball outside since it's the longer throw. Purdy understands this, knows even though Banks is outside on Kittle pre-snap, since he's lower, he's not going to carry him deep, knows it's because the Giants will likely switch him, and off his back foot makes a pinpoint throw. He's not hot here, that's a term we'll get into in a sec. Basically, it means there's a free runner unblocked, which on this play, Kayvon Thibodeau is not. But with the running back Elijah Mitchell blocking him, Purdy can't just sit in the pocket normally, he has to slide to his left to buy time, and from an unstable platform, look at the location on this thing. His poise shines through when he's hot, that's probably the quality that separates him the most from other quarterbacks. But before we dive deeper into what that means and how he balls out under that pressure, I want to thank this season sponsor, Prize Picks. 
Prize Picks is a daily fantasy sports site where you can pick players every day. They've got NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, disc golf, cricket. You want to play? Prize Picks has got it, and they got you covered. To get going, you choose two to six players and select whether they go higher or lower than their projection. This week, I'm feeling frisky. Give me all the big numbers. I think Hertz has a nice game against the Rams, and I'll take Mahomes to absolutely go off in Minnesota. Prize Picks is a ton of fun. It's the only app I'm using for this season. It's easy to get your money out. It's easy to play in just a couple of seconds. If you want to give it a shot, use my promo code Rollins and they'll match your first deposit up to $100. That's promo code Rollins. When Purdy is hot, that's when his true poise shines through. He has one of the lowest pressure to sack rates, where people usually think of that as an escapability metric where you're running around. Well, Purdy has that too, but also is able to get rid of the ball when he's hot. This is about as clear of a cover zero look as there is, which means one-on-one -on -one man coverage with one more pass rusher coming than you have blockers. This makes him hot because there's a free runner coming off the edge. Offenses build in hot routes to protect against this very situation, where a hot route is a short route that the QB can quickly throw if all of a sudden he realizes he's hot. But that's where Purdy is different. McCaffrey is the hot receiver to this side with what's called a now slant, which is just a one-step slant that's too far away for Bobby Okariki to cover immediately. But Brock doesn't want that, he is a big game hunter. He knows Cover Zero will also have inside leverage defenders, because remember, there's no inside help from a safety or underneath guy. So he knows the corner route has that good leverage to come open, except he's hot. An NFL pass rusher running untouched is smashing you in less than two seconds, but Brock doesn't care. He knows he can backpedal to buy time and dots up the Giants. He averages 2.53 seconds to throw, which is the seventh fastest in the league, because he can diagnose defenses extremely quick and get the ball out fast, especially when he's hot. Here, the Rams throw a really nasty simulated pressure at him, where they're only sending four, but get the 49ers line to slide the wrong way and get the free runner, making Purdy unexpectedly hot. On the left and right side of the screen, the 49ers have hot routes. Ayuk is running what Shanahan calls a thin, five-yard in route, and McCaffrey is running a quick flat. You can see him see Quinton Lake coming unblocked, so he turns quick. He knows the ball might be coming now, like it would for a normal quarterback, but Purdy doesn't want him or Ayuk. He wants the big play. He sees the safety rotate down to cover up for the blitzing Lake, and he actually has a good concept against rotating safeties if he wasn't hot. With two seam routes against one safety, Purdy can take his choice. But since they're longer developing routes, it's risky to wait and target them with the free runner. We can see just how calm and poised he is as he peaks late coming. And watch how he shuffles just a couple steps to his left to take the hit off his body. This is what legit quarterback play looks like in the NFL. Yes, he throws over the middle all the time, just like Jimmy Garoppolo did but he doesn't force the ball like Jimmy always felt like he was when watching him, because Purdy does two other things that open up the offense. For one, he targets deep and outside the numbers just a bit. It's certainly not his strength, but he's had some nice one-on-one -on -one throws so far this season. He throws a pretty nice deep out here and there. When the defense condenses inside to stop the inbreakers, that leaves the 49ers all-pro talent one-on-one -on -one outside, and so Purdy can keep the other team honest. Defenses are basically forced to either bunch up the box to stop McCaffrey running the ball, or flood the middle to stop the yards after the catch in breakers, and that usually leaves the 49ers gang of monsters one on one outside, which he can then capitalize on. The second thing he does that Jimmy didn't is extends plays with his legs just a little. There are times where the defense completely blankets the 49ers offensive play call, and these would be sacks with Jimmy no doubt. He couldn't run and there is nowhere to throw but Purdy can just squirt around just enough and turn a sack into a surprise 10 yards. He has shown out as the guy for the 49ers, but as I alluded to earlier, there are still some troubling signs. His turnover-worthy plays percentage, which is a PFF metric determining throws that could be intercepted, even if they aren't, it's 11th highest in the league. That's not a terrible, terrible number, but when you study his film, those throws pop up more than you'd like, and in an offense that's all about efficiency and a defense that is lights out, turnovers are the last thing you need. He'll also miss deeper throws on occasion, 
sometimes his arm talent limitations are apparent and he just can't make throws that he should. Which leads you to wonder what he'll look like if he played without one or two of these absolute freaks he has at receiver. Still, all it took was three games this season for me to completely and unequivocally hop on the Purdy bandwagon, cause all he's done is ball out. The Giants tried to expose a weakness they thought he had, he doesn't, and he tore them to shreds. He had complete domination over the Steelers in Week 1, and then a solid Rams win in Week 2. I am finally a believer. He has answered every question, aced every test, he has looked the part in every way, and he is him. Without the superstar talent, without Kyle Shanahan's system, is he a good quarterback? It's hard to say, but for 2023, who cares? He is exactly what this 49ers team needs right now, and he has an elite offense operating at an elite level. Between their offense and this defense, the 49ers look unstoppable. Brock Purdy looks every bit legitimate, and the 49ers are well on their way to winning a Super Bowl. Oh,